Hi there, today we're looking at evaluating NLP models via contrast sets. And these are too many authors from too many places for me to read out. So we'll just jump right into the problem. Um, so what is the problem? Or let's jump into the solution. Here you see a visual question answering task. Visual question answering, in this case, you have uh, two pictures right here, picture one, picture two, and a sentence. Two similarly colored and similarly posed chow dogs are face to face in one image, right? And I guess the task here is to see, to have the system answer, is this correct or incorrect? And as you see here, I believe that's a correct statement. Um, or you're, uh, you're maybe tasked to ask which is the image that this applies to, right? Is it image one or image two? And of course here it's image one. Um, now the, the uh, problem with such systems is that there are a lot of um, easy things that the models can do that will usually get them the answer. What we like to imagine is that the model will look at this and it will recognize that this is a dog here, right? This is a dog, here is its face, and this is a dog, and here is its face. And it will see, aha, there's a count, there's a two of them, right? And here's two of them. And um, th there's the notion of face, and there's notion of pose, and so on. Um, but usually there are tricks that the models can do to get this easier. For example, I know that in a particular visual question answering system, whenever there is a question of what is the ground covered in, or something like this, the answer is always snow, right? It, you don't even have to look at the image, right? Um, and similarly, there are a lot of these kind of <coughs> tricks that the models learn and the authors uh, recognize correctly that this is mostly a data set problem, right? So the data set, um, usually what you do in these data sets is you have an image, right? You have an, you have an image that you scrape from the web or something and it has some mountains and maybe, uh, right? And then there's, there's, there's snow, right? On the mountains, on the ground and uh, maybe a house. And you give this to a bunch of, to a, a, a mechanical Turk or someone like a raider, and you instruct them, you produce a question to this image. And you give them a couple of examples, right? And they're usually kind of lazy, and they will just look at it and be like, oh, what questions could I ask? Okay, I'll, I'll ask. You know, you need to ask something. Usually the instructions are it must be visual, and it must <laughs> maybe be answerable with a one word answer or something like this right um or it must you know it must be a multiple choice question so there are these number of instructions and they will usually be like oh okay what's kind of special about this picture okay there's snow so i'm gonna ask about that snow right um so the the problem is mainly the process of data set generation right that is that will lead to kind of biases and easy solutions for the models, where the models, they will simply kind of learn statistical correlations between things and the intention. So we have a big diver di divergence between the intention of what the data set creators want, right? The intention is, in this case, is visual understanding visual of the world and there's a big big difference between this and between how the data set is really constructed so the authors are trying to address this with what they call contrast sets now they say okay you get out of this process here you get a data set right you get a training data set and a test data set maybe here a smaller test data set. What they say is what we should do is we should additionally have 
these things called contrast sets, right? So this is train, and this is test, and usually these two come from the same distribution, right? You simply make them and then you split them somehow and you take the test from the train, but these here are not from the same distribution. This is the contrast. What they argue is that the authors of the data set should create the contrast set, right? So you see that there's a split here where the data set comes from. They argue that the authors of the data set with knowing what intention they have, they should create the contrast data set manually um, by hand in order to make kind of really hard examples that show what they want out of a system. They capture this here in their example. So if we go back to the example, here are things and they suggest to do this via perturbations. So what they would do is they would start at this example up here, right? They would start and they would perturb it textually or via image. So they would perturb it to make it change the label, the gold label. This is different from adversarial examples. In adversarial examples, you would want to perturb a sample such that it is still the same, but to the classifier, it's different. Here you have the opposite goal. You want to make something that is means kind of the opposite, but you want to test whether your classifier can pick up on that. So in this case, the one example would be two similarly colored and similarly posed cats instead of dogs, right? Are face to face in one image. That would change the label, right? The if whereas before the answer was yes, that's a correct sentence, now it's no, that's not a correct sentence. There are no cats in these images. Also, here three similarly colored dogs. So the intention of the authors, you have to view it through this lens. The intention here is that the system can recognize the species, right, of the entities in the images. The system can count, and the system can compare, right, compare, in this case, colors. So you want to kind of make perturbations on these attributes from a test image, right? You can also think about image perturbations where you keep the sentence, but you modify the image such that there's still two dogs and they're sim they're still facing each other but and but they're not similarly colored anymore right so the similarly colored here would be the the attribute that where before it was true now it's false with the new image right so you get the gist that uh, the people that created the data set that know their intention will create manually these samples and the authors they propose a new metric um, to track this but essentially the authors propose how well the models do on these contrast sets will be a reflection um, should, should be it should be kind of an additional thing that people do with their NLP models mm. all right so you get the picture I that is I believe the the entire um, gist of this paper and I have some problems first of all here they say all right um, let's give a toy example in two dimensions say you have this data set right and the, the red one is the correct decision boundary right and you want to capture that but because you only have limited training data and because you in in this generation processes you have systematic biases so if we had non-systematic biases we would think that okay we maybe pick this and this one and this one here and this one here and this one here right we don't get all of them but we kind of get an iid sample right that wouldn't be so much of a problem you could still kind of recover the decision boundary but because we have systematic biases the authors argue um we we actually introduce biases so the systematic bias here is that we would o of the blue ones we would only capture uh things on this sorry on the on on this 
layer up here and of the red ones orange ones we'd only capture things of the level down here and um thereby we introduce the kind of re data set the bias it doesn't require this complex decision boundary anymore right and if we now the, the problem is if we collect the data set like this and then we simply say well these ones are the test set and these ones are the train set right it will generalize well to the test set but it will not generalize well to what we actually want and therefore the authors say well if we introduce these contrast sets here um, then you see that the decision boundary that we found will not perform well on these contrast sets right uh, so they would say we take one example of the test set right this is you can see this is this example right here and we would perturb it to make it change its label or in this case one of them where the label remains right we would kind of perturb it meaningfully and yeah so as i said i have multiple problems with this first 2d toy examples very very bad for nlp models First of all, low dimensional intuition does not generalize to high dimensional intuition, like n very, very little. Second of all, even worse, usually these NLP models have so many parameters, much more parameters than you have data set, that which means that your decision boundary is incidentally going to be simple, even if you had all the data you could possibly want. Um, this it. it it's just a, a very different kind of problem. And then the next problem is if even with by doing this contrast set, and you already see it here, right? You already see it. Uh, you can only kind of bicker about the data. Okay, but with the contrast set, you only really capture this one aspect. So if that was actually... Um, well adhered to you could measure very locally whether or not this this would, would work or not and the ability to come up with meaningful contrast sets to ever capture what the model is doing is almost impossible because you have to create them manually and then you suggest that the authors themselves make these contrast sets remember the authors are the ones that gave these instructions right these instructions right here the authors provided them um, to the to the data set annotators so the authors will probably be even more biased if they have to do their own right if they have to now create their own uh, contrast examples they will probably even though they know their intention they will probably be like more biased than if you at least this here at least this here is a distributed process across people right so you get things that you wouldn't have thought of but if just the three authors of the date of the paper make the contrast examples i would argue that's that's an even more biased measure often um so all of this it just strikes me as as the paper is basically saying let's try on a few things and I think the fundamental problem is much, much deeper and it goes with this intention part. Like I get it, the the, the, the visual question answering data set doesn't capture the um, doesn't capture what you want. It, it it doesn't make the model suddenly understand that there are dogs and there are species of animal and so on. It simply makes it correlate things. But that's what deep learning and especially NLP does. So, right, it's, it's like it's like saying you, you build, uh, I build an, an ImageNet classifier and it can't fly. Um, and and, and, and if, I, if I try it on my test set that it requires my computer to fly and my ImageNet model can't do this, um, then it, it doesn't serve my intention, right? And I mean, it's, um, it's a crass example, but ultimately, uh, you the correct approach should be to better encapsulate your intention into the data set generating process and then correctly interpreting the results that mean okay on this data set 
um, as far as we can tell the way we created it this is the performance of the model it doesn't the model will never learn to fulfill your intention and I get it that's what you're saying but still even with these contrast sets I think it's a really bad measure um, to formally propose it's uh, I think you should much more propose how is the data set generating process different from what you want and what are the limitations there right and um, <coughs> so that's that that I think that will lead to much more meaningful um, meaningful results than simply the authors providing a few manually put examples that they feel uh, capture their intention it will not will not the, the reason we do deep learning instead of uh, straightforward if else programming is beca because we cannot capture even our intentions and um, <coughs> therefore data set generation is the only is the only method we have uh, so to say all right so ultimately I believe these this whole NLP especially the visual question answering and so on the natural language understanding part needs to have a grounding so um, ultimately I think grounding grounded NLP uh, it means basically that you're not only doing NLP which is simply you take text and you take images and you correlate them somehow right you just make a statistical connection grounded NLP models uh, is the hope that you could build something that actually understands the world understands that there's entities that these interact that there's something like a pose that there is um, something like what a color means right what a dog is and so on and um, as entities I think we're not there yet and I think that will be the ultimate solution to these kind of tasks not uh, not any sort of um, local very local very low dimensional perturbation I mean yeah let's say you create a contrast set you will be able to capture one tiny little bit of your intention one tiny little bit even though you know your intention you will capture a tiny little bit all of the thousand other degrees of freedom of your own intention you won't be able in the to capture in the contrast set I guarantee you all right that was my uh, quarrels with that I invite you to read the whole paper um, they actually do this for NLP data sets it's a lot of work and they show um, that the models uh, perform much worse on their contrast sets and interestingly the humans don't the humans are able to solve the contrast set. of course of course because you tell the humans what the task is right that's like <laughs> humans succeed on contrast set like how surprising what you should do is <laughs> you should just provide the humans with the data set not tell them what the task is no, uh, even worse just provide them with the encoded data set like not the text itself but actually the token IDs right and then <laughs> and then make them do the thing and the humans will just as well make a statistical correlation between the tokens and the images or whatnot and the humans will fail just as well on the test on these contrast sets because the humans maybe they'll figure out what the task is but probably not so humans succeed on contrast set how surprising you tell them the intention while well, you don't tell it to the model yes um that i seem a bit critical but yeah please read the paper um it's an interesting paper and with that goodbye <laughs>